fully for our new project. Uh, the old Tesla meets HHO production. measure that hole, make sure it's the right size and um, we'll be back and continue on. Okay our setup's all mounted, um, got our three phase generator here, I still have to uh, mount this up a little better, put some um, bracing brackets on it because it's only plastic, our little quarter horsepower motor. Uh, we've got two meters hooked in at the moment um, from one of the phases this one here is going to measure our voltage this one here is going to measure our frequency so um, I'll plug it in now and we'll get it cranked up and we'll have a look at that it's a little bit noisy being mounted on a wooden bench but um, nonetheless here we go AC uh, and a frequency of 347 hertz. So the frequency is quite high, which is good, and um, the voltage is quite high as well. And from our frequency there, we can get an idea as to how many RPM. Okay, so next I've got to hook up our um, microwave oven transformer there, which is behind our two meters, and we've got to see if the uh, frequency that the generator is putting out is going to be happy um, working with that microwave oven transformer. So um, I'll go ahead and do that now, I'm just going to hook it on there and um, fire it back up and see if it's uh, going to be happy and um, not put too much load on our generator. Okay so um, with our microwave oven transformer in place, you will see down there have a diode on the input um, that's good for a thousand volts six amps which will be nowhere close to um, we then go up from there into a 0.75 microfarad cap and then up to a spark gap which I'm just using an automotive spark plug why not as you can see there and you will see here, I've just placed a uh, small coil from a solenoid over the spark plug lead so as we can get some sort of idea of the frequency we have down here. That light is shit, I know. Um, and there you go. So we're going to fire it up now 
and see how we go. Okay, so we're not getting much sense out of our frequency. Um, it's jumping all over the place. I don't want to hook up my scope or anything to that. Um, so I'm not sure how else we could do it. If I move the coil up there a bit, we'll try again. We can adjust that frequency by adjusting the size of our cap there, um, no problem. And now is where I have to be careful. Chances are that cap is still loaded, um, so we must discharge everything before we go touching anything with our fingers. But um, all in all, we're ready to go. We're going to set up a very small um, hydrogen cell, just a couple of plates in a glass of water or something, and that cell. Um, goes between what we're using as our ground or negative and the input of the transformer and then what happens then is every time a spark jumps it shorts out the top winding sends a huge pulse um, a huge magnetic field pulse through the um, primary and uh, that goes through our um, HHO cell so that's the next step I'll get that set up and we'll see how we go Okay, so first let's have a look at our gas production with our spark gap disconnected. Fire it up. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to try now is we have our spark gap hooked up and we're going to switch it on and uh, have a look at the difference in gas production. said that's uh, straight tap water, no additives, no electrolyte, um, which is what we want really. Um, so the whole idea is to get this uh, system onto a motor and um, draw, a draw as little mechanical energy as possible to create the maximum volume of gas while keeping the heat down, or the heat losses down in our um, hydrogen production unit. Um, I'm not too sure that I'm too happy with that um, result at the moment so I'm going to um, change that cap over to a one new F cap and come back and we're going to have another look at it. Okay so um, the cap you see sitting on top of the original one now is a 1.08 UF 
going to plug that in and have a look at our gas production once again. And we're only doing a visual, there's no measurements going on here at the moment. Um, that'll be later on down the track. First we just want to get the effect happening. to be marginally better. Um, don't really like fiddling around with these caps without discharging them. But, um, let's disconnect our shorting circuit again and have one last look without it. see hardly anything at all. Uh, we probably have a 3mm gap between the plates at the top and about a 5mm down the bottom. So the gap's fairly large um, and it is just straight water. But I'm um, not sure I'm too happy even now with that output. Um, we are at the moment using a um, 40 series stator which is a high voltage stator and it means that the copper wire is 0.4 mil with a lot more turns. Those of you that seen my last one, um, I was using this 80 series stator meaning the copper wire is 0.8 mil, fewer turns, gives us more current but a lower voltage at the same RPM. Um, putting this one on, I'm not sure I'd get the voltage required at this speed to um, get the spark cap working on our system but um, we'll keep fooling around with it see how we go and um, make improvements as we go but uh, that's our setup at the moment um, I'm going to uh, see if I can get a little bit more out of the system I'm just going to quickly swap stators and see if that makes a difference and uh, we'll have a look at that in our next video so um, then we're going to get rid of that yucky little cell there and um, we're going to put in our big dry cell that Daryl made for me and sent over from America. Very kind of him. Didn't charge me a bras or a zoo for it. So um, there's definitely some uh, nice people left in the world. But that's it for me. I'm signing off for this one and um, we'll see you next video. See how it goes. We might even have a little fool around and see if we can um, rig up a quick Tesla coil and see if we can actually drive the Tesla coil from the generator without um, any modifications. Until next time guys, cheers.